All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here's the list of topics to be covered in this video. Problem one, let's use the law of sines to solve for this missing length x. So the sine of an angle, 54 degrees, divided by the length across from it, x, will be equal to the sine of an angle divided by the length across from it for all choices in one given triangle. So sine 54 degrees over x equals sine 26 degrees over 17. We can solve this for x and get 17 sine 54 degrees over sine of 26 degrees, and that's it. We could find the third angle and then the third side length pretty easily, but we were not asked to do so, so I consider this problem done. Problem two, let's use the law of sines to solve a triangle where angle A is given to be 44 degrees, angle C is 69 degrees, and length B is 23. So let's draw a triangle. Here we have it. Well, let's label the known values, the two angles and the one side. Now we know two angles in a triangle, which means the third angle is really quite direct to find. The sum of the three angles has to be 180. This allows us to solve that the missing angle is 67 degrees. There we have it. Now that we know all the angles in one side, we can use the law of sines. So the sine of B over B equals the sine of A over A. Replacing known values, we can solve that the missing length A is 23 times the sine of 44 degrees divided by the sine of 67 degrees. There it is. We can do this again, that the sine of B over B is equal to the sine of C over C. Plugging in the values that we now know and solving for the missing side length C, there we have it, 23 times the sine of 69 degrees divided by the sine of 67 degrees. So now we have solved for all angles and all sides. In problem three, we'll use the law of sines to solve for all possible triangles, given that angle A is 100 degrees, side length A is 34, side length B is 19. We're going to draw a triangle and replace all the known values. We now know two sides, but the angle we know is not in between them. That's called side-side angle. The angle is not in between the two known sides. This is not a triangle congruence, meaning there might not be any solutions at all. There might be one solution, but there actually could be two different solutions. We can use the law of sines to partially solve for one angle. So the sine of A over A must equal the sine of B over B. A is 100 degrees, little a is 34, and little b is 19. This allows us to solve that while I do not know the angle B, I know its sine has to be 19 sine 100 degrees over 34. So having solved that while I don't know the angle B, I do know that its sine has to be a particular value, we could just take an arc sine. Remember that the range of the arc sine function is quadrants 1 and 4. Now the thing we're taking an arc sine of is positive, since 100 degrees is a quadrant 2 angle, its sine is positive, so inside the parentheses we have 19 times a positive number divided by 34. So we're taking the arc sine of something positive, meaning the b that is produced by this arc sine function is also positive, in other words it's the quadrant 1 angle. But there might be another solution in quadrant 2. Two. Remember that arc sine misses quadrant two angles. It only gives you an angle in quadrant one or four, but for a given value of y, there is probably going to be a quadrant one and quadrant two solution. However, in this example, it cannot be a quadrant two angle. In quadrant two, if the angle B were larger than 90 degrees, our triangle has a 100 degree angle A, and if B was larger than 90 degrees, we would already have more than 180 degrees total in the triangle, and that's not how it works. So B cannot be in quadrant two. So it can only be in quadrant one. So the one we have found is the only possible solution. So we're seeing here one possible way that even though it's not a triangle congruence, there will only be a single possible solution. So angle B has to be exactly arc sine of 19 sine of 100 degrees over 34. So now we can find the missing angle C. It's 180 degrees minus 100 degrees minus the angle B. Make sure you're computing this arc sine in degrees mode if you're actually estimating things. So C, 180 minus 100 is just 80. It's 80 minus the arc sine of 19 times sine of 100 degrees divided by 34 as long as we're computing that arc sine in degrees. Now the law of sines can solve for the missing side length. Sine A over A equals sine C over C. Solving this for little c, it's little a times sine c divided by sine a. Now we just replace all of our known values, and there it is. So we've now solved the triangle. We have found all of our angles. Angle a was given. Angle b and angle c we solved for, and we found our missing side length c. 
This is well reasoned. It's the only possible solution. There couldn't have been a quadrant two angle B because it would have exceeded 180 degrees total in the triangle. All these values are completely exact. There's no rounding error here, but it might not be very satisfying. A lot of people object to it looking like there's so much more to do when it's really just computation. And we might worry that we made a mistake along the way. So we can estimate values. Just be careful about degree versus radian mode. Everything here is presumed to be in degrees. And this works out that the angle B is about 33.4 degrees, angle C is 46.6 degrees, and side length C is about 19.6. Now the longest side is 34, and that's across from the largest angle of 100 degrees. And the smallest side was 19, and that's across from the smallest angle, 33.4 degrees. So this is a reasonable solution. This is always a way you can check if your triangles make sense. Largest side across from largest angle, smallest side across from smallest angle. If that works out, you might be correct, but if it doesn't work out that way, then you definitely made a mistake. Problem four, we'll use the law of sines to solve for all possible triangles if the angle B is 50 degrees, side length A is 106, and side length B is 40. So let's start by drawing a triangle and labeling the known values. There we have them. Now we know two sides and an angle that isn't between them. Again, we have side side angle. It's not a triangle congruence. There might be no solutions. There might be one, but there might also be two. We can use the law of sines to partially solve for angle A. Sine A over side length A is equal to sine B over side length B. Plugging in the known values and solving, we get I don't know the angle A, but I know its sine is 106 times the sine of 50 degrees divided by 40. So A, the angle, isn't quite known, but I do know what its sine is. So we can take an arc sine and say possibly A is the arc sine of 106 times sine 50 degrees over 40, if we have a quadrant 1 or 4 angle. And a great many students at this point in a final exam or something would raise their hand and say, Professor, my calculator's broken, what do I do? Why are they making this objection? Well, 106 times the sine of 50 degrees over 40 is about 2.03, and the arc sine of 2.03 does not exist. So even without a calculator, we can see that we were going to run into this problem. We have this ratio 106 over 40 that's a little bit bigger than 5 over 2. Also, the sine of 50 degrees is a y-coordinate corresponding to an angle of 50 degrees that's a little bit higher than the y-coordinate corresponding to 45 degrees. So the sine of 50 degrees is a little bit bigger than root 2 over 2. So 106 times the sine of 50 degrees over 40 is a little bit bigger than 5 over 2 times root 2 over 2 or 5 root 2 over 4. 5 over 4 is bigger than 1 and root 2 is bigger than 1. So this quantity 106 sine 50 over 40 is definitely bigger than something bigger than one times something bigger than one. It's bigger than one. So you cannot have the sine of an angle be bigger than one. So earlier we said, I don't know what the angle A is, but its sine had better be this quantity, which is bigger than one, and that's not possible. There are zero solutions. Problem five, let's use the law of sines to solve for all possible triangles if angle A is 40.3 degrees, side length A is 183.9 degrees, and side length B is 248.6 degrees. Okay, let's draw a triangle, label the known values. Again, we've got two sides and an angle that's not between them. This is not a triangle congruence. We might have no solutions, one solution, or possibly two solutions. We use the law of sines to partially solve for one angle. We have two sides, they were across from a known angle of 40.3 and an unknown angle B, so let's solve for B using the information we have. We get, I don't know what the angle B is, but its sine had better be 248.6 times the sine of 40.3 degrees over 183.9. All of these decimals really tells me that I'm going to want to do some rounding off. So the sine of B is approximately 0.87434. Okay, so we don't know the angle B, but we know its sine should be about 0.87434. This isn't bigger than one or less than minus one, so there's no impossibility here. This is all perfectly possible. If B is in quadrant one, it'll be given by the arc sine of this quantity, which is about 61.0 degrees. But what about an angle in quadrant two that has the same sign? We found a quadrant one angle with a given sign. The quadrant two angle will be pi minus that, or 180 degrees minus that, so about 119.0 degrees. So we have two candidates for our angle B. Do they both make sense? Yes. The one angle we already had was 40.3 degrees, 
combined with either 61.0 or 119.0 will not produce more than 180 degrees. So both of these could be our choice of angle B. So we have two possible solutions. In one of them, we're gonna set the angle B to be 61.0, and in the other, we're gonna set it to be 119.0, and then we're gonna keep going from there. So here are our two solutions. We set B equal to 61.0 on the left and 119.0 on the right, and now we can start solving for the third angle and the third side. The third angle is pretty quick. It's just all three angles have to add up to 180. That'll solve to 78.7 on the left and 20.7 degrees on the right. Now we can use the law of sines to find the side length C. I would recommend don't use angle B, which had some rounding error involved in it. Use the original given information to avoid compounded errors. So on the left, sine of angle A over A equals sine of angle C over C. This allows us to solve for the side length C and we end up with about 278.8. And on the right, the same computation will give us about 100.5. So we put those sides into our triangle. In each triangle, you can now check. On the left, what's the largest side? 278.8. It is a cross from the largest angle, 78.7. What's the smallest side? 183.9. And it's across from the smallest angle, 40.3. Similarly, in the triangle on the right, the largest side is 248.6. And it's across from the largest angle of 119 degrees. The smallest side is 100.5. And it's across from the smallest angle, 20.7 degrees. So both of these are reasonable solutions. There's nothing immediately obviously wrong, I'm pretty sure we're good. Problem six, let's use the law of sines, find a triangle with one obtuse angle, given that angle A is 45 degrees, side length A is 27, and side B is 30. Draw a triangle, label what we know. Now we know two sides, an angle not in between them. This is still not a triangle congruence. There might be no solutions, one solution or two solutions, but remember, we're specifically looking for a solution with one obtuse angle. Now we can use the law of sines to partially solve for angle B. Sine A over A equals sine B over B. This allows us to solve that the sine of B is 15 root 2 over 27. We're exploiting the fact that the sine of 45 degrees is exactly root 2 over 2. So we know that the sine of angle B is 15 root 2 over 27. Note that 15 over 27 is very, very slightly larger than a half, because 27, the denominator, is a little bit less than 30. 15 over 30 would be exactly a half. Make the denominator a little smaller, 27. Make the overall quantity a little bit bigger. So 15 over 27 is a little bit bigger than a half. So sine of B is a little bit bigger than root 2 over 2, meaning that the arc sine of 15 root 2 over 27 will be just a little bit bigger than the arc sine of root 2 over 2, which is exactly 45 degrees. So the two possible angles whose sine is 15 root 2 over 27, well, one of them is exactly the arc sine of 15 root 2 over 27, that's the quadrant 1 solution, and the corresponding quadrant 2 solution is 180 degrees minus that. So our two choices for the angle B, arc sine of 15 root 2 over 27 and 180 degrees minus that, we know the first is just a tiny bit more than 45 degrees, which means the second is a little bit less than 180 minus 45, or a little bit less than 135 degrees. The first choice, we would have A already given to be 45 degrees, B a little bit bigger than 45 degrees, which means the missing angle C would be a little bit less than 90 degrees. We have 45 and a little bit more than 45 already known, what's missing? A little bit less than 90. In other words, if we made that choice for angle B, this triangle would have no obtuse angles. So we've been instructed to use the other one, 180 degrees minus the arc sine of 15 root 2 over 27, a little bit less than 135 degrees, there's our obtuse angle. So here is our known choice for the angle B. Then we can solve for the last angle. It's 180 degrees minus A minus B, which works out to be arc sine of 15 root 2 over 27 minus 45 degrees. The law of sines can then be used to solve for the last side. Side C, we solve for here. We plug in our missing numbers. There we have it. There's our length C. If you want approximations for things, as many people would, angle B is about 128.2 degrees. Angle C is about 6.8 degrees, it's quite small, and side length C is about 4.5. So if we put those in our triangle, we can check. 
Is the longest side across from the largest angle? Yes, 30 is across from 128.2. Is the smallest side across from the smallest angle? Yes, 4.5 is across from 6.8. So everything checks out, this is pretty reasonable. Problem seven, use the law of cosines to find x in the given diagram. So the law of cosines looks like a generalized Pythagorean theorem where you have one thing squared plus another thing squared equals the third length squared on the other side, but there's a correction term of minus two times the product of the two lengths you use times the cosine of the angle in between them. So since we have the angle in between 11 and 19, we do 11 squared plus 19 squared minus two times 11 times 19 times the cosine of the angle between them, which was 17 degrees, equals our missing length x squared. It's, so when we solve for x, it's plus or minus a square root, but it's a length, so it's gonna be the positive one, and we're done. If you really need an approximation here, I mean, this is an exact solution, but if you punch this into a calculator, x is about 9.07. Problem eight, use the law of cosines to find the angle A. So setting up the law of cosines, we have 17 squared plus 23 squared minus two times the product of 17 and 23 times the cosine of the angle between them, which is angle A, equals the other side across from A, nine squared. Plugging and moving things around allows us to solve that the cosine of A is this expression here. So A is simply the arc cosine, which works out to be about 19.53 degrees. Observe the arc cosine function has range zero to pi. That exactly represents angles that might be in a triangle, zero to 180 degrees. So the law of cosines when solving for a missing angle does not give rise to this ambiguity that the law of sines did in earlier problems. When you are given three sides or two sides and an angle between them, in other words, you have side, 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 or side, angle, side congruences, use the law of cosines. There will be one solution because you have a triangle congruence. If you're given two angles in one side, well, being given two angles in a triangle means you really were given all three. Then you have a side in between two angles. You have angle side angle congruence. Use the law of sines. There will be one solution because you have a triangle congruence. You don't need to solve for any missing angles, only side lengths. So the law of sines will not be ambiguous. If, however, you're given two side lengths and one angle not in between them, then you have a non-congruence side-side angle. You're going to use the law of sines, and you have to determine whether there are no solutions, one solution, or two solutions. And in this problem set, we saw examples of all of these.